I'm so excited to be here with all of you tonight. Thank you for being here. And if you're just getting in here, if you could throw in the chat what you teach, um, language and level, I would appreciate it. It will just help me to tailor everything to all of you. Lots of Spanish, ooh, K through fifth Spanish, that's my favorite. Ooh, heritage speakers. This will be great for heritage speakers. German seventh and eighth, very good. I love the German language, it's amazing. Thank you all for being here. I am going to go ahead and get started just because I wanna make sure that I can make this as useful as possible to all of you. And we're gonna be talking about movies and music that move us. They are a wonderful way to teach students languages. And I hope that some of this is useful to all of you tonight. Um, as we go, please feel free to throw questions, comments, thoughts in the chat so that we can all learn together. And I'm gonna start with an either or question, which is one of my favorite ways actually to start class. I started doing it during the pandemic to get kids talking. It's a great way to kind of activate prior knowledge and get everyone on the same page. So my question for you is, would you rather spend a week on an island with no movies or no music? If you had to get rid of one of them, which would you pick? I've got, it's kind of tied. No movies, no music, no music, no movies. If you were my class, I would go around and I would count and I would say like uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis. I would count the people and say how many people wanted no movies and how many people wanted no music. Um, I personally would pick no movies because I love music. Music kind of is like my favorite thing. I wouldn't be able to do without the music. Oh, and my video turned off for some reason. There you go. Back on. It is a tough decision, though. Um, ooh, no movies. Just <laughs> don't make me pick one album. Can, does anyone want to share either out loud or in the chat why you picked what you picked? Just out of curiosity. But I also did this with students, and it's a great way to get to know them. Sure. Uh, this is Bernadette Orsita from New Jersey in the United States. Um, I picked no movies because I love music and you can kind of see something. You can visualize something going on when uh, you hear music you can visualize it. A movie, you're kind of stuck just to that movie. I agree. I, I would pick music for very similar reasons. It's kind of like my favorite thing, but I also like movies. There's no wrong answer here. That's one of the things I like to do is tell students there's no wrong answer to these questions. All right, we're going to get launched right into how we can use music and movies in the classroom. Um, so today's plan, we're going to talk about music in the classroom, how we use clips in the classroom, so like short YouTube clips, how we can use whole movies in the classroom, television series we can use in the classroom, and then I am going to do a giant resource share. You will have access to this entire presentation, and if you are a Spanish teacher, and I'm sorry if you're not a Spanish teacher, but if you are a Spanish teacher, all of the resources that I am sharing through throughout this presentation, I'm also going to share directly with you. So you will have the clips that I use with my students and the slides that I use with my students that you can go ahead and use in your classrooms right away because I love to share with teachers. I only apologize if you're not a Spanish teacher because I wish I had similar resources to share with you. Okay, just so you know a little bit about myself, I um, did spend 18 years in the classroom. I taught every grade from pre-K to eighth grade. I was the Michigan World Language Association Teacher of the Year in 2020. Um, I love to present and work on curriculum and work with different um, districts on PD. And I love coffee and yoga and I'm a mom to three. And those are my three. The teenager mostly likes to not be pictured, which is why his face is hidden in the back. And just like I experiment with my students, I experiment with my children and kind of learn how they like to acquire, and I can apply those things in my classroom too. So now I'm gonna share all of my tricks with all of you. Why use music in the classroom? First, there's lots of brain engagement. It engages the auditory cortex, motor cortex, cerebellum, hippocampus, and even the visual system. Some people are talking about liking to dance and move with the music, and that's kind of why. It provides cultural insights into history and traditions. Also provides authentic language and pronunciation. You will hear different um, authentic spoken language from different countries and different accents and different slangs and regional expressions. Just like there's no one way to speak English, like I am from Michigan, 
the way I speak English is different than the way people in Texas do it and the way people in Boston do it and the way people in Australia do it and the way people in England do it. There's no wrong way to speak the different languages. It's going to change with where it's spoken around the world. And so when we use music, when we use movies in the classroom, we give our students a chance to hear some of these different regional sayings and the way people use the language in different places. Um, it helps with pronunciation and listening skills, and there's lots of engagement and retention. Um, students lose at home for extra exposure to the target language. When I do music in class, the way I'm going to show you that I do it, I cannot tell you how many parents tell me, oh my gosh, all we can listen to now at home is Spanish music. So they listen, to, they go home, they turn it into their ringtones, they make it a part of their lives, and it helps them take language outside of the classroom, which is a big thing that we as teachers want. Okay. So I'm going to show you how I do my March Madness Brackets, O Locura de Marzo, which is like this big music competition that goes on. Some of you probably have heard of it. Some of you have probably even done it. This was not my idea originally, but I have adapted it um, so that I think it, um, it gives us a chance to practice really important vocabulary and grammar and key phrases, target structures with students. And so I'm going to show you my adaptations, but I didn't come up with this originally. Um, but I think that the way I do it is really helpful. So I want to share that with all of you. Some of these slides I created myself from scratch. Some of them were created by other teachers and shared in different Facebook groups online. And they said to use it as you wanted. So I just want to be clear that not all of this is just for me. So when I introduce the music brackets to my students, they see a screen like this and it just says K, which means what in Spanish. And these, these English little helpers would not be on the screen. And I would tell them, it's una competencia de música popular en español. And we would go and after I said it, the kids would say the English with me. So I would point at each word and they would say, a competition of popular music Papa, in Spanish. And that's a good way to make sure that you are bringing all of your students along because we want to make sure that our um, solar processors are fully with us. Hey, Erica, can you make me co-host? Yes, just one moment. Chris, I'm trying, but I, um, I can't. Oh, there I can. Now I got it. There. Now you're co-host. Perfect. Thanks. Thank you. So I introduce it this way, and this is a great way to make sure that all of your students um, are understanding what you're saying. It doesn't hurt our faster processors or our heritage speakers to have that clarification, but it will hurt your students that don't quite understand and not have it. So I make sure I clarify everything for them. I tell my students we're going to listen to 12 canciones, 12 songs. But there will only be un campeón, one champion of all the songs. And then they get to decide the champion. Vamos a, we are going to, and we're going to, too, listen to the songs, escuchar las canciones, talk about important words, watch the appropriate videos, and vote for our favorite song. And I'm going to walk you through how you do this with two different songs, and you're actually going to get to vote so you can see how I do it with my students. Now we're going to go on to our very first competition, Primera Ronda. And I do have my students do the drum roll ahead of time. They get really into it. And our first round is Kun Kun Pra por Sima Funk. And I would ask my students, what do you think por means? And they would guess by. I'm not going to make you guys do it tonight because I don't even have a long day teaching. Contra against Mariposas por Renata Flores. So I would let them know which two songs we are going to be having to, to duel against each other today. And you will get all of these slides. And then I present them this picture, this page, and this is a page that I have made on my own, and this is the way I started doing it. And this is a great way to practice really key structures, but with really interesting information. I have all these very colorful pictures of Sima Funk, which kind of um, rises their interest. And then it just says, me llamo, me llamo Sima Funk. And then I, I, I would say, have the students say that in English with me. So I would point it and they would say, I call myself Sima Funk. Mi nombre es especial. Now my kids know name. So then they would say, my name is special. Mi nombre completo es Eric Iglesias Rodriguez. And then I want to have students say that with me in English. My complete name is Eric Iglesias Rodriguez. So there's the beginning, just the introduction. Soy, 
and I have this down here if it's a new word for students, soy de Pinar del Rio, Cuba. And then I would have students go ahead again and say it to me in English. I am from Pinar del Rio, Cuba. Mi cumpleaños es el 7 de abril. My birthday, and the kids would say this, is the 7th of April. And I have these little pictures next to them because what's going to happen is by the time we're done with this page, there's going to be a whole bunch of text that they've read. But as you progress through the competition, they're going to get really comfortable with reading it. And I'll be able to put up a whole page and they'll just read it themselves because they'll have built up this kind of reading muscle as we go. So, so I've gone with name, where they're from, their birthday. The next I do their age. Tengo 32 años. And this is really basic structures here. You could adjust it to your students' um, age level and their needs and their language levels. But these are all interesting real life things. So even though it's basic things like I have 32 years or I am 32 years old, it's interesting because they want to know about the musicians. Me gusta. Me gusta means I like. Me gusta bailar. And I would have kids guess what that means. Me gusta la libertad. Libertad. Freedom. And I would again point at these, I like freedom. And then we have something that's a little bit longer. And all of these starred words, I give the definition down here to help the students that haven't quite acquired those words yet. So fui a la escuela. I went to school para ser to be doctor. And then I would ask students, what do you think doctor means? And they would all, you know, get it or they would all shout it out so they could supply that word. Pero. Después de mi segunda, segunda, second año, decidí hacer, I decided to make música en su lugar. I decided to make music instead. And I would again point at each of these words. I went to school to be a doctor, but after my second year, I decided to make music instead. And make sure all the students were on the same page. Your heritage speakers, your faster processors won't need that, but it will just give them an extra repetition of reading that will help them too. And then I always like to include a couple of, these are like kind of the interesting facts about the musician. Grabe, which is I recorded. Mi primer canción, song, cuando tenía 12 años, when I had 12 years. And then we would talk about that for a minute because that's pretty interesting that he was already recording music at 12 years of age. After that, I would give them something that, that talks about the song. And this is, again, something that my students who are a little bit higher or faster processors or heritage speakers are going to mostly be able to read on their own. But we would go through and I would do the same thing. Me gusta mucho el flow que tiene la canción. And then I would make sure I was checking down here and we are translating one sentence at a time. Just for the sake of saving time, I'm not going to translate this whole thing, but I will go ahead and show you that I have the English there. So it's just talking about the origin of the song. So we're trying to get students to connect not only to the artist, but also to like the meaning behind the song. So I would go over this meaning behind the song. And then if I can, I'll find a little clip with the actual musician. And I, um, Seema Funk has lots of really great clips out here. And in this really brief one we're going to watch for like two minutes, he explains the meaning of his name, which I thought was really powerful. And there are closed captions on here. Yeah. Dile. Uh. Yeah. Seema viene de Cimarrón. Los Cimarrones eran los negros esclavos que se escapaban a ir en el monte bajo sus propios términos, bajo su propia cultura, buscando la libertad. Y el fondo de alguna manera también es música que vino de África. Todo ese grupo vino de allá también. Lo cogieron los americanos, lo transformaron y pusieron a la gente a bailar. We, I would watch a little bit more of that in class, but basically he was talking about the origins of his name. Cimarron is a term for an enslaved person who escaped and was living free in Cuba. And then funk is his style of music. So that's why he's Cima Funk. There's a lot of power in names. So I really like to kind of dive deep and help the students really connect to the musicians. After that, I would study just the chorus with students. I don't study the whole entire song because it would take too long. And I would focus on words that they already know, like vamos. I say vamos a lot in class. We use it all the time. It's just we go or let's. So the, the lyrics are let's fill ourselves with the beauty of life. A gozar sin drama, to enjoy without drama that tomorrow is not known. 
And I would point out the words students knew here, like sabe. Déjame llenarte de alegría. Let me fill you with joy. Relaja esa cuerpo. Cuerpo, ven y baila. My students all know baila. Relax the body. Come and dance. Cumpra, que es lo que dice? What are you saying? My students would know a lot of that phrase, que and dice. And then cumpra hasta abajo, till the bottom. Cumpra ahora baila. I would make sure to point out words like vamos, ven, baila, que, dice, hasta abajo, and baila. And those are just words. I would point those out especially because my students know them, and I want them to be listening for them during the song. So after all that, after we've learned about the musician, and remember, it started out with just a little bit of language, but they ended up reading this whole page by the end. So you start with just a little and build on that. We have finally come to listening to the music. And now we're not going to listen to the whole thing just to save time, but I am going to play part of the song for you because we are all going to vote on our favorite in a moment. Vamos a ripiano con lo lindo de la vida a gozar sin drama que mañana no se sabe nada Déjame llenarte de alegría Esa cuerpa Hard out to sing Ven y menea con el Cuncumbra ¿Qué es lo que dice? Cuncumbra ¿Eso qué cosa es? Cuncumbra Espérate, espérate Cuncumbra We would definitely listen to the whole thing because the kids love this song. And then we come to even more reading and writing. And they... There we go. We come to even more reading and writing, and the kids don't feel like they're doing a lot of reading and writing, but they are doing a ton of reading and writing during this. So this was a slide that I found online and just modified slightly for my students. At this point, I have passed out to them a half sheet of paper. And on that half sheet of paper, they're going to write a sentence about both of the songs that we have listened to during the day. And they are also going to vote. And then this is a top secret vote that they're going to turn on. And this is what they use to write their sentence. So they pick one set of words from each box to create a unique sentence that shares how they feel about the song we just listened to. So, for example, they could say, en mi opinión. In my opinion, la canción, the song, es fuego, is fire. And then, but they get to create their own sentence and they are allowed to feel however they want to feel about it. So just take one minute and in the chat, just for fun, so I feel like I'm not talking at you, write one sentence and you can do it in Spanish or English about what you thought about our first song. And while my students were doing that, I would definitely play the music for them to listen to. If a few people play along, then I'll move on to the next slide. Vamos a ripiano con lo lindo de la vida. A gozar sin drama que mañana no se sabe nada. Oh, I love the sentences. The song is chévere. El ritmo es bueno. Oh, I love it. El estilo es bastante chévere. Es feliz. I love all these sentences. And the kids will get really, really good at this really quickly. Like we did this after like one, one class. And then the next class kids were like dying to share their opinions. And this gives them a chance to express how they feel about the song um, 
with their classmates and it gives them lots of shareable um shareable language so then we would just move on to the next song and this is about renata flores and i'm not going to take as long on this one just so i make sure we have time for everything else but i would do the exact same thing and you'll see the language is very similar my name is renata flores and again me llamo renata flores rivera and then the kids would say it as i pointed it i call myself renata flores rivera soy de ayacucho peru i am from Ayacucho, Peru, and I always have the flag there. Mi cumpleaños. So this is the exact same information as I shared about Sima Funk, but now it's about Renata. And the kids get really, really, and I'm still reading all the comments. I love them. The kids get really good at reading these quickly, and then they feel really confident. That's what we want is to get them interesting repetitions of target structures and to make them feel confident about it. Tengo 20 años. Me gusta la música. I have 20 years, I like the music, I like the mountains of Peru. And again, in class, um, I would spend about probably 35 minutes on both of these songs total, but that's just because that's how long my classes were. I would be going a little bit slower, but we don't have quite that amount of time tonight. And then again, with the longer ones, I would just make sure I'm taking the time to go slow and point out the words at the bottom. Mi música es urbana andina. So the kids would get it right away, my music is, and then I have Urbina Andina, Urban Andean. A veces llamana, llamada rap andino, sometimes called Andean rap. I also, Elisa wrote, me encantan las canciones de Renata, yo también. I also think she's amazing. Um, and then the first song was Kun Kun Pra. And I am going to share all of the slides with everyone at the end. So if you are a Spanish teacher, you will have access to every, like to the student facing slides, but all teachers will have access to all of these slides too. So this just talks about her type of music. And I would go over this very slowly. So students were all on the same page, noting that the starred words are down here. And then this is her interesting fact. Soy una activista. I am an activist. My objective, and I'm just kind of cheating. I would say this in Spanish and English in the classroom. I'm trying to save time here. My objective is to rescue our culture and save our language. My language is Quechua and is from the Incas. And this really gives us a chance to um, talk about the fact that, you know, Spanish wasn't the original language of a lot of places, of all the places in Latin America, and talk about the indigenous people that live there and indigenous languages, which I think is a really important part of what we do in opening the world to students. Más que ocho millones de personas hablan quechua. And this talks about how many people speak quechua in Peru, Ecuador, and Bolivia. So we're already learning a little bit about, um, about Renata, and I kind of went in depth with her, but she's so amazing. And I would go over all of this first in Spanish and then in English, but she was actually on an American Idol like style show called La Voz Kids. And she lost, but Renata and her mom decided to um, go ahead and publish her her song that she was going to use if she won. And um, it became super popular on the internet and that helped make her famous. And that's right here in case you want to listen later because I'm going to share these slides with you. And this is another Quechua song she did, which you might recognize. If it plays. But it's all in Quechua. have time to play more but I played those for my students in class and they're just getting them used to Renata understanding what her meaning is behind her music and who she is and then again we would go over just the chorus and this one I was really excited because it has a lot of words my kids know and I'm just going to tell you in English instead of Spanish to save time but it's this song is part Spanish and part Quechua so it's a mix and it's tell your story, make your voice heard. Let's create a better world. There are many stories that build hope. There are many colors that paint the dawn. We are many, we are all equal and diverse like butterflies. I am like you, you are like me, equal and diverse like butterflies. To be brave, not perfect, that is not a defect. Defend the defenseless, that's the right thing to do. So here is your second choice for the song bracket. And we'll only listen to a touch.
cuenta tu historia, hasta escuchar tu voz. Logremos un mundo mejor. Achka que vaya a cantar, agua y tacatar y chiqui. Achí ya está en un pico, una achka ni la cuna. Somos muchos. So again, I will listen to the whole thing in class. We just don't have time now. Again, a really powerful message. After they listen to the song, the kids would write their sentences again. Of course, I pick a song about mariposas, Chris. <laughs> so I'm not going to make you write a sentence, but if you would like to share what you think about Renata, go ahead and throw it in the chat. The kids are always so excited to share their opinions about the songs, and it's a really powerful way for us to all listen to each other and share in the target language. So that would be the next thing we did. And then after that, yes, I do think it's unique. It's a different feel for sure with, with that song. After that, the kids are going to compare the two songs. Now, when I was virtual for um, COVID, I had them do it with Pear Deck, where they would just drag a dot to the side of their side of the screen. When we were in person, I would often have them get up and move to one side of the room or the other just to get them moving around. Um, and then we would compare the two songs and we would talk about them as we do. So we are talking a lot during these lessons. So the questions I asked them is, which song is more sad? We're not going to do that one. I'm going to ask you one of these. Which song is more dramatic? Which song is more ridiculous? And this doesn't really apply to some of these, but it applies to other songs that were in our competition. Which song is more romantic? And again, it doesn't apply to all songs. Which song is more fun? And again, this is, it looks like we're just being silly here, but qual, es, mas, these are all important things for the kids to learn, like comparisons, descriptive words. So even though it looks like, um, we're just like being silly and having fun. This is actually really, really reading heavy. Um, which song is better for dancing? Go ahead and put in the chat number one, if you think Kung Kung Pra is better for dancing. And number two, if you think Renata is better for dancing. Yeah, I, I would agree that Kung Kung Pra wins for this one. Which one is better for crying? And again, this involves lots of really interesting discussion for students. This one's my favorite one. Which song is better to sing dramatically in the shower when you're home alone? One, if you think it's Kung Kung Pra. Two, if you think it's Mariposas. Go ahead and throw that one in the chat. Ooh, we've got an even mix. I sing both of them pretty much all the time. So I would agree with both votes. And then finally, after all of that is done, I have students say which one they think is going to win. And again, important things, pienso que, okay, I think that, va a ganar. So these are, it seems like it's pure silliness, but it's actually magic because they are practicing so many key structures that they need to know. And then finally, my students would vote. My students will usually will vote on their sheet of paper and they know it's top secret because I tell them I don't want them voting for what their friends are voting for. I want them voting for their favorite. So they vote on their sheet of paper. They turn it in. I collect them and I don't even like check the votes till after they leave. I have also done voting on Google Forms before and had them write their sentences on Google Forms. That's kind of nice too, because then you can have them just pick A or B, one song or the other, and then it does all the counting for you. There's no wrong way to do it. Those are just two different ways you could do that. And then finally, and then the this would be the next day. So the kids have all gone home. I have tallied all the votes. They come back to class and I say, okay, class, in our primera ronda, we had Kung Kung Pra versus Mariposas. And then I feature student comments. I feature two student comments for each song. This person wrote, I think the song is cheesy, fire, and cool like me. This person wrote, and these are actual student comments. I think the song it, and the singer are fire, fast, cool, and emotion, and like exciting. I like it a lot. And then over here, 
I think the message is good and I like the outfits and the rhythm and the sound. Pienso que es bueno. I make sure I feature a mix of both Spanish and English and Spanglish comments because I want my kids who can express a lot in Spanish to feel seen, but I also want my kids who are just trying to feel seen. So I don't just make sure that I'm only sharing like my highest students' comments. I make sure to share all the students' comments. And students get really excited when you throw their comment up there. I don't put names. So they don't have to say it's their comment if they don't want to, um, but they do really, really like seeing their comments up there. This is again, day two. And then finally, I re reveal the results very dramatically. I say, but in Spanish, the winner of the first round is, and then I ask them, drum roll please. And it makes it very dramatic and the kids get super excited about the answers and talking about the amount of votes for each gives you a chance to, and I think this year it was really um, Renata Flores and Sima Fung for the last ones left in the bracket. Um, it gives you a chance to talk about numbers and authentic contacts. Kids get so into these brackets and they love, love, love getting to know the artists, and getting to know the meaning of the songs. They go home, they listen to them, they make them their ringtones. I share a playlist with my students. My parents say they listen to them at the home all the time. So this is really a super great way to get music out of the classroom and into their lives. Um, any quick questions about music before I do a quick dive into one way you can do moves with students? Thank you, Anna. I appreciate it because I feel like I'm rushing. Anna said she's appreciating the presentation. Either speak it out loud or throw it in the chat. And if I don't get anything, I'm going to move right along. Okay, I got a question. Yes. Uh, so how do you pick these songs? I mean, do you go to some online uh, top 100? How, how do you pick them? Okay, so there is a Facebook group called Locura de Marzo. Okay. And in it, they will have song recommendations every year. But also, I, um, because I taught elementary, I had to make keep mine like a lot more PG and G than other teachers did who teach high school. So I just, I love Spanish music. I listen to it all year round. And I just keep kind of a giant list of songs I think would be good for my bracket. So I do steal some from the Facebook group. But just as I'm going throughout the year, I'm like, oh, that song's appropriate. And so I'll add it to my list. So by the time I get to this in March, I have a giant list of songs. And mm -hmm. if you're, you could rotate them out every few years too, just depending upon your age level of students. Great mm -hmm. question. Anyone else? Excellent. I'm going to jump right in then to one of my favorite ways to do movies. Um, there's some great uh, comments in the chat too about ways to do it in French and Roxum is another great platform says Maria though I've not used that one so I don't really know much about that okay why use movies and clips in the classroom and by clips I mean short YouTube clips like the things your kids are obsessed with again almost the same reasons for using music cultural immersion showcase the culture customs and tradition of other countries authentic language and pronunciation connects to emotions and builds empathy and understanding for other ways of life. And I think that's one of our key jobs as language teachers and contextual learning. They can hear language outside of the classroom. So all of these are reasons to use movies and clips. And the movie I'm going to be talking about is Encanto. I watched it. I was obsessed with it. Now I I've seen it too many times at this point, so I'm no longer obsessed because I've seen it a lot, a lot, a lot of times, but there was so much culture in this one. I was so excited to dive into it with my students, and I'm going to show you how I broke up the culture. Um, again, I start with the question to go ahead and activate prior knowledge to kind of get students in the mood for learning, and these questions are all in Spanish. I've only added the English to help. So the question is, would you rather be really strong? Or would you either go grow flowers magically? So go ahead and throw your answer in the chat just for fun. Super strong or growing the magic flowers. And you can either you can also do one or two if you would like. Nelly, I'd also pick strong, but flowers would be pretty cool. I just really identified with Luisa. Excellent. All right. Lots of strong people, a few flower people. There's no wrong answer here. After I went around and counted in class, and we talked about this in class, we would dive right in. I had this music playing as the kids came in. Because we are about to do a deep dive in Colombia. 
to start class, I would always go ahead and let students share how they're feeling with class meeting. I don't have time to get into how I would do this too, too in depth right now. I would just take five minutes and say, como estas? And the kids could raise their hand, share how they're feeling. Um, they could associate with different people in the movie, which is just for fun, kind of. This is what the students had for note taking. Some of my students like to take notes. Some of my classes needed to take notes just to kind of help them pay attention. This was all in the target language. So it said, nombre aquí, said, como se llama, what is their name? What do they like? What do they not like? And so there were places for them to fill in the answers. I was doing this with fourth and fifth graders. Um, with older students, you might allow them to do more of their writing. But this was all in Spanish, not in English. The English is just to be helpful right now. So what I did was I divided the movie by characters, and with each character, we studied different aspects of Colombian culture. And so, um, and it it got so in depth, and the kids loved it so much that when I was done and we had watched the movie and learned all about everything, and this was probably like a six weeks of lessons, I had so many parents stop me to say, "Oh my gosh, we had to watch Encanto for the 90th time," and my kids stopped me approximately every 30 seconds to explain the culture to me. And it might have been a little bit much for the parents, but that was music to my ears because I want students to be so excited about the culture that they're learning. So you'll see this is really similar to what I did with the music brackets. I have the questions in here though. Me llamo Mirabel. What do you like to do? I like to spend time with my family. What do you like? I like um, arepas con queso, which is what she ate in the movie. And I did end up um, sending my students home with a recipe later. How old are you? How are you feeling? So again, all of these are kind of key phrases kids need to know. And they get so good they at reading them because they see this over and over and over and over again, both in the music and in other contexts. So they're really, really familiar with all these really important structures, very easy. Where are you from? I am from Colombia and I have the flag. We can talk about the flag. We can talk about the pictures. You can change your questions. If you have upper level students, feel free to change some of these questions to apply to the language that you want them to acquire. This is just what worked for my fourth and fifth graders. Then I always try and make sure I'm including some interesting facts. Like this is Alejandra Espinosa. She was the inspiration for Mirabel and the cultural advisor for the movie. And then they like to see the voice, the actors. So I would say, la voz, la voz es Stephanie Beatri Beatriz. Me llamo Stephanie Beatriz, soy de Argentina. And I would say, she's la voz, la voz. And I would ask kids to guess. They would get it very quickly. And then I would just be able to say that for the rest of the students. So after we kind of learned a little bit about Mirabel, we do some deep dive on some of the culture that is featured around her in the movie. For example, she is wearing kind of a, um, the outfit she's wearing is like a traditional dress from Colombia. So I compared it to a picture of an actual woman from Colombia wearing very similar clothes. On her dress, there is a symbol for each member of the family. So I would say, um, I got to review family members as we talked about all of the different symbols like para abuela, una candela, animales, para Antonio. And we will review all of that together. And then um, Mirabel was wearing a really, really important bag. Um, it's called la mochila Wayu, which is a very a bag made by the Wayu people who live in Northern Colombia. And it's this like matrilineal, so it's passed down through the women, um, weaving skill, and they make these beautiful bags, and the bags are actually, um, you can go and buy them, but we went ahead and watched this and learned about the Wayu people. So again, we're talking about indigenous people and talking about there's different ways of living in Colombia, and it's really important to be able to talk about all of these things. And in the process, you could talk about lots of things in the target language, like the color of the bag, the style, if your students would wear it or not. These are all valid questions to talk about and whether or not they think it's important to continue traditional um, customs like weaving bags. And we don't have time to watch either of those videos, but they are fabulous. And then the other big thing I talked about with Mirabel is that all of these like festive stuff, festive things that she was carrying are for an actual, um, an actual festival in Colombia. So we talked about the actual festival and some of the treats she was carrying. And then I found this little video about it. And you can hear the little girl in the video say, me gusta, porque, which is I like, because. And I think it's again great for students to be able to hear that authentic language right in, in the middle of what you're doing. 
we're not going to watch the whole thing, don't worry. It's funny to hear the little girl. A mí me gustan las más feltas porque tienen muchos dulces. Celebrar. She's adorable. And the kids love hearing her and they super love that they can, you know, listen to native speakers and understand them in authentic context. So we watched that video. And then the last thing, thing I pointed out um, about Mirabel was that she uses, that people in Colombia sometimes use their vo their mouth to point. And so she was not making a kissy face at Antonio here. She was pointing with her mouth. And so we talked about that a little bit and how different cultures use different gestures. So even in just this one character, we've gone uh, into a lot of different things about Colombia that were hidden in the very beginning of the movie. We did the same exact thing, both Isabella, and then we talked about the flowered, and I, we only have a few minutes, we talked about the flowered balconies of Cartagena and how it's different or similar to where the students lived. And then we also talked about Luisa, who is my favorite character in the movie. And, um, oh, cool, Nelly says Alaska natives have facial signs for words too. I love that, I did not know that. Um, we talked about how Luisa, was based on Maria Isabel Urrutia, who was the first um, Olympic Olympian that won a gold medal for Colombia, which was pretty cool. And then we talked about how the bridge she lifted up was actual real bridge in Colombia that is a national uh, monument to independence. And we all of that was done in the target language. And then we watched um, Lin Manuel Miranda talk about the music a little bit, which we don't have time to do now. And then the end of the first day was I had this, yes, I, I crammed it all into 30 some minutes, was I had this giant chart of different family members and we played um, guess who with yes or no questions. So I went over each family member, Alma es la abuela, and I went over their relationships and talked about how she was the mom of these kids and how they married these kids and had these kids and how they're all siblings. But all this is done in the target language. And because it's about um, La Familia Madrigal, the kids were super interested in it and probably more interested than they would normally be if I was trying to teach them family words. So um, the yes or no questions they could ask the person who was had pitched someone was um, the color hair of the person, the shirt of the person, the dress of the person for the color, what they liked. So for example, if I was thinking of Bruno, they could say, does your person have a blue shirt? And I would say, no. Um, do they have a green shirt? And I would say, yes. So they could start to vote guess which person um, I had chosen for my secret person, if that makes sense. I was going to play, but clearly we don't have enough time because there's only three minutes left. Um, any questions about, I know I went quickly, any questions about doing movies in class? I know there's probably a lot I could have said but time is short. I had a quick question. Um, is yes. there an app sometimes where I don't want to show the whole movie, I just want to watch a part of it, or I want to delete uh, a certain scene that I don't feel appropriate? How can I, is there an app that does that? You know, maybe someone else will know if there is an app. I have just done the old fashioned way of noting the times I want to make sure I pause. Oh, Suzanne says Ed Puzzle. You could do it with Ed Puzzle. I don't know if you could do a whole movie with Ed Puzzle. Suzanne, do you know if you could do a whole movie with Ed Puzzle? Um, but I have just done the old fashioned way of pausing it and fast forwarding and skipping parts that I don't want the kids to see. That's In what fact, I've been doing too. Yeah. There, someday there should be an app for that, but I would wonder if there would be copy, copywriting problems with the whole uh, movie. Okay. Um, Anna asked if we watched the entire movie in class. We did. I called it a party day and it was after like six weeks of lessons and we ended up pausing the movie a billion times because the kids were like, oh, there's the emeralds and oh, there's the capybara. And they wanted to talk about all of the learning we had done. So it really did feel like, um, even though we were watching a movie, it really was like a learning activity. Uh, we are gonna have to skip the clip chat because we are only one minute from done. I do want to show you Oh, gracias. Linda, that me hace feliz. Um, I had a clip chat I was going to show you, but you don't have time. What I do want to show you, though, is you could do what I just did with that whole movie with any series, with any YouTube video. There's tons out there. I did ask AI um, what series it, it recommends for different languages. Please know I have vetted none of these. So, 
ch check these out at your own risk, but there is a list in the slide that I'm about to give you that shows you what series AI recommends for French, for Mandarin, for German, for Arabic, ah, for Latin, for Italian, for Portuguese, and also for Spanish. On this slide, this one that says scan me, and I am about to put the link to the slides in the chat too. This one that says scan me is a giant Google folder that has the actual student facing slides for all of the lessons I just showed you. So all of my music March Madness brackets, they're there. All of the lessons, all of the lessons I did for Encanto, they're there. So if you, and they, I spent a lot, a lot of time on these. So if you are a Spanish teacher, this is my gift to you. Lots of slides already made that you can use whenever you want with your classes. If you are not a Spanish teacher, I am sorry, but I only put those hours into those resources because they were for my students. I probably spent like 12 hours in the Encanto slides and I'm not exaggerating and even longer on the music slides, but that's because I love it. I just threw the link to this entire presentation in the chat as well. And that is there for you um, if you want to access the slides for any ideas or if you wanna take a look at what I was suggesting you do with a short YouTube clips. I'm sorry, I had more slides than I have time for, um, but I usually do because I always like to over-prepare. I hope that this was um, helpful for you. Please feel free to stay and ask me if you have any questions. Otherwise, I hope you have a fabulous rest of your evening. Thank you for being here. I know you're all very busy people. Thank you for being Erica, here. Erica, do you know if um Erica, do you know yeah. if we'll get like a certificate of participation or anything like that? Um for tonight. If you email us, we can send you a certificate. I'm gonna put just email okay. info. Thank you. You're welcome. I hope it was helpful. Erica. Thank you, Erica. So much. I do have a question. This uh -huh. is Linda. Um, so do you do all the um, vocabulary in the slides before you show the movie? Or do you do it as you go? Or I did all the slides first. So we really okay. did like this giant deep dive. So by the time we actually watched the movie, they were so in love with Colombia and Encanto, they like couldn't hardly stand it. So we did all of the slides first. It was a long Great. six weeks and they were really dying to watch the movie by the time we were done. Great. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Have a good night. You too. Have a great night, everyone. Thank you. Hi, Erica. Hi. Yeah, I joined, I think I joined a couple of minutes late and I am not sure if you mentioned that we will have these slides available. Yes. I, I put it in the chat. And I'm going to put it in the chat again. And then, all right, let me give you a new link. Someone says they're having a hard time accessing the link. All right, try that one. I put a new link. That one should work better. Yeah, that one is working. Yay. And then this right. giant one that says scan me is where all the lesson folder is with all of Perfect. the Encanto slides and music slides. Perfect. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Yes. I have, oh, Go ahead. I have a question. Uh -huh. um, how do you do it? Like, how do you incorporate these when you already have like a full set of like curriculum that you need to do and you can't necessarily just spend like six weeks on a movie, which sounds amazing. So I, um, in my district, have some flexibility. So I was able, because I was co like covering the same things, I would cover in a lesson about age or colors. Um, I was able to replace those lessons. So it, it really just depends upon, you know, what you can and can't replace. Like if you, if you just need to teach about colors, you could teach about colors via the movie. Or if you just need to teach about numbers, you could teach about numbers via the voting. If you can't do that, 
I would try and squeeze in like little mini lessons, like 10 minutes at the end of class, or maybe do it on a Friday if you can get away with doing it on Fridays. So that would be how I would do that.